Hello and welcome to our module on the esophagus. So this is a slide from Dr. Scali's lecture on GI innervation. And I think it's a great image to show the uh, layers of the esophagus and how they relate to each other. So uh, we have the mucosa, submucosa, and the muscularis externa, also known as the muscularis propria. That's the same thing. Uh, and on the outside, you'll have either a serosa or adventitia. Um, for this esophagus, in our lab manual, it says adventitia, so that's what we're going to go with. Uh, but throughout the GI tract, you're going to have all of these layers every time. So just make sure you get comfortable with uh, these layers and learning how to identify them. They're going to have uh, some slightly different contents depending on where you are in the GI tract. So let's talk about the mucosa first. Uh, we have a stratified epi uh, squamous epithelium. And we also have a muscularis mucosa layer. So that's this uh, pink line that's going around. And in between the stratified squamous epithelium and the muscularis mucosa, we have some connective tissue called the lamina propria. So looking at our slide, at low power, this darkly staining um, material here is the epithelium. Just deep to that will be the lamina propria, and then deep to that will be the muscularis mucosa. And of course, this is the lumen. All right, so if we zoom in, you see that it's stratified squamous. These are all squamous cells. They're stacked on top of each other. And this is a non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. We know this because we have nuclei all the way at the most superficial layer of the uh, epithelium. So here's your uh, lamina propria. It's mostly made of connective tissue. Um, we have some blood vessels, some lymphocytes. And here's the muscularis mucosa layer. The smooth muscle here is actually in cross-section. So um, if you can see the bundles of smooth muscle all around here. And you might be wondering what this is. This is actually also uh, epithelium. And because if you look at this and compare it to this, it looks pretty much the same. Um, the basal layer is darker than the rest of it. You kind of can see that around here as well. Um, if you're wondering why it looks like it's in the lamina propria, it's not really in the lamina propria any more than this is in it. It's just that this is a weird section where it's um, cut at a different angle. And that's kind of the, the challenge with histology, right? That you're always looking at a two-dimensional section of a three-dimensional structure. So this is basically if I took a knife and cut right here, I took this chunk of epithelium and I rotated it 90 degrees uh, towards you. That's what you see is right here. So now let's talk about the submucosa. Uh, so the submucosa will be just deep to the muscularis mucosa. That's this tan area right here. Um, and it's right before the muscularis externa. And the submucosa, it's going to be uh, usually larger than the lamina propria. And you can have lots of blood vessels, glands, and ducts leading into the lumen. All right, so let's look at the slide. Again, so this is epithelium. Here's the lamina propria. Here's the muscularis mucosa. And once you start seeing these mucosal glands and all this connective tissue here, that's when you know you're in the submucosa. So let's take a, look, a closer look at these mucosal glands. Um, remember from prior videos that mucus looks like uh, this, this bubbly structure here. Um, it's got this tall columnar epithelium. These are the ducts to secrete the glands out into the lumen. And the majority of the submucosa is just connective tissue. Uh, you see some blood vessels around, some fat cells. There should be uh, some mucosal plexus as well, also known as Meissner's plexus. It's a little tough to find, and um, uh, our instructor, Dr. Kramer, for the lab session didn't really emphasize it, so we'll get back to it in a little bit. Um, next, let's talk about the muscularis layer, the muscularis externa. So there's an inner circular layer, and that is surrounded by the outer longitudinal layer. So let's find them here. So here's the inner circular layer. Right. And if you go further out, this is the outer longitudinal layer. 
and you can tell this is skeletal muscle because uh, this is the direction of the muscle fibers and you see striations going perpendicular to that direction and you see a lot of peripheral nuclei as well. All right. So because we see all the skeletal muscle, that means we're in the uh, so we're in the superior one quarter of the um, esophagus, and in between the two muscular layers, we should be able to find ganglia of the myenteric plexus, also known as our max plexus. So if you go to low power, you can kind of see the separation between the uh, inner circular layer and the outer longitudinal layer. See how this is more lightly staining? So we can zoom in. Uh, you can also just go by the fiber direction. See, this is more of a longitudinal cut. This is more um, of a cross section. Here you have some uh, collagen's connective tissue. So these guys are going to be the ganglia of the myotaric plexus. Sometimes it's a little tough to find nerve tissue. Uh, basically, what I'm looking for is uh, a wavy, um, frothy pattern to the tissue, which you see here. Uh, it looks very different from the muscle. It's not as eosinophilic, and the collagen here is kind of all over the place, whereas this looks like it's uh, its own entity. Uh, this is might be nerve tissue as well, just because of the swirly, frothy appearance, but I'm less confident about that one. See if we can find more here. Here's another good one. See how it's different from the muscle and just the mess of collagen that's around it. All right, and then uh, just outside of the um, outer longitudinal layer is the adventitia. So that's all of this connective tissue out here. It's a mix of just collagen and uh, the sites, you actually see uh, some muscle out here as well. But I think that might be just different sections from this outer longitudinal layer. All right, and as for the submucosal plexus or Meissner's plexus, we can try to find that as well. Um, it's just a little tough to find it here. If we look, if we look close to the border between the muscle and the submucosa, I think these are probably it. See this frothy pattern? I think this is a cross section of the nerve. This and this, and this might be this wavy material right here might be uh, closer to a longitudinal cut of the of the plexus. This one might be it as well. This looks like a blood vessel.